with this and hallucination hi guys today i want to share with you a short research paper which i believe is very critical for those of you who are building with llms so if you've been building with llms whether you're using ai for research or building ai agents or automated flow workflows you know that one of the biggest pain points or the challenges is the fact that very often the output that is produced by the LLM isn't reliable because the LLM is producing what is called hall hallucinations. So I've recently stumbled upon a research paper that was um, created by the Google team. And basically what they are doing is they are creating a benchmark for understanding the amount of hallucinations or how grounded is a response by an LLM. This is what I wanted to share with you in this short video. It's very useful. Before we uh, dive into the research and I will show you the table, the leaderboard of the benchmark, make sure uh, that if you're interested in AI automations and AI agents, make sure to subscribe and uh, like the video. Comment below if you have any questions. Now let's get going. Let me show you the research. So basically this is the new benchmark. It's called Facts Grounding. It's a new benchmark for evaluating the factu factu factuality of LLMs. So basically, um, as you know, LLMs are transforming, transforming how we access information, but the grip on factual accuracy remains imperfect. They can hallucinate false information, particularly when given complex input. In turn, this can erode trust in LLMs and limit their application in the real world. This is why many use cases, LLMs require many uh, very often a QA by a human in the loop because it is very often unreliable. So what they did here, before I show you the results, they created a data set um, which comprises of almost 2,000 2, examples, 1,700 examples, each carefully crafted to require long form responses grounded in context document provided. Each example comprises a document, which is um, pretty long until uh, 32,000 tokens, so approximately 20,000 uh, words, and a system in is in instruction requiring the LLM to exclusively reference the provided document and an accompanying user request. All the examples were divided into a public set and a private held out set, and Basically, what they did, um, as written here, they have different types of um, documents from different domains, finance, technology, retail, medicine, and law. The user requests that were made to the LLM were also wide-ranging, including requests for summaries, Q&A generation, and rewriting tasks. And they did not, did not require any creativity, mathematics, or complex reasoning. So let me clarify what they did. They took um, many examples of documents from different domains and many prompts. So let's say an example, please summarize the, summarize the document above, or please create a, a Q&A for the document above, or please rewrite um, the task, please rewrite um, a task based on the document above. So different types of uh, requests for the LLM and different domains of documents, this is the breakdown of domain distribution, medical, legal, internet technology, financial, and retail product. And this was the task distribution. So fact finding, summary and simplify, summarize, summarize and format, the pros and cons of a document, concept comparison, explanation, effect analysis, final summary. So let's say we have a legal document, which is 20 words long, 20,000 words long, they asked it to fact find um, a specific to, to find a specific fact in the research or summarize it or um, summarize and reformat it whatever then what they did they took two uh, four different three different llm judges gemini 1.5 pro gpt 401 cloud 3.5 sonnet uh, this is in order to mitigate the difference between the scores because very often we see that uh, when a model is supposed to provide um, to judge his own output is going to be biased and give it a, a better score so this is why they took 
um, these three models and each model gave uh, a score to the output that was generated. So uh, the automatic judge, judge models were comprehensively evaluated against a held out test set to find the best performing judging prompt templates and to verify agreement with human raters. So basically they also had human raters who, who gave rating to each task. So each facts grounding example is judged in two phases. First, responses are evaluated for eligibility and disqualified if they don't sufficiently address the user's request. And second, responses are, uh, responses are judged as, factu as factually accurate if they are fully grounded information contained in the provided document with no hallucinations. So first of all, they disqualify from the datasets any response uh, that uh, isn't suf doesn't sufficiently address the user request and second assuming that the response is relevant they check and see if it contains only um, data that is grounded in the context that was provided in the document with no hallucinations so this is the flow not so crucial and obviously um, let me see so this is a better uh, pie chart as you can see here, the distribution of the uh, domains and the tasks. Let's see if there's anything crucial here. Uh, nothing crucial here. Let me just show you the results, which to be honest, the results are quite surprising. Um, and on one hand, they make you think because obviously this research paper was uh, generated by Google, but on the other hand, it is re reproducible. So, um, I don't know. It's, it's it's surprising to me to see these results. So, from a factuality score, Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental scored 83 percent. Gemini 1.5 scored 80, almost 83. Gemini 1.5 Pro 002 80 percent. Afterwards, we have Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Then we have GPT 4.0. Then we have Haiku. Then 4.0 Mini, 0.1 Mini, and 0.1 Preview. So this is quite surprising. It's, this basically means that um, Gemini 2.0 Flash is more grounded than Claude 3.5 and O1 Preview and O1 Mini. So um, this is the food for thought because if you're generating, um, if you're using LLMs and you have reputational risk or you want to reduce the amount of QA um, in your process or you want to remove the human in the loop uh, it is worth it is worth checking out this leaderboard assuming that we believe the, the results and it's not biased and it's not contaminated so basically it means that if we're using gemini 2.0 the amount of hallucinations that we will have is going to be smaller which um promotes the idea of using it more often than for example o1 preview which is hallucinating in 40% of the times. And this is also after some of the responses were disqualified. So this is, a, I mean, this is very problematic. Like 40% hallucinations is a no-go um, when you need um, output that is factually correct and based on um, data and not hallucinations. But this doesn't mean that Gemini 2.0 is better all in all than all the other um, LLMs. Just from this perspective, for this um, benchmark of, of being grounded, based on this benchmark, it seems to be performing better than the other solutions. Just something to keep in mind. I wanted to record this video because I think that this is a very important um, benchmark to have in all business use cases, to be honest, because it's very important for us to know the factual accuracy and the grounding of AI models. This is just um, the first release. I'm sure that there are going to be like derivatives and follow-ups. People are going to reproduce this. People are going to upload new models uh, and also start um, probably trying to game the benchmark. Um, but it's just a, an interesting thing to, to also to research because this is actually one of the most crucial things in generating uh, an AI agent or uh, agentic workflow, you wanted to have as little hallucinations as possible, uh, ideally zero hallucinations, and this is why this benchmark is so important.
I guess that's it for today guys I hope you enjoyed this video obviously leave your criticism and feedback below if you haven't subscribed yet please do um, obviously also like the video and until next time keep on automating